Alrighty, kids, uh, we're going to do lesson 13. So this is Eureka Math, lesson 13. The objective is, uh, it's fifth grade, by the way, <laughs> divide decimals by single digit whole numbers involving easily or easy multiples using place value understanding and a written method. And so we were talking about what do you mean by easy multiples? And then I said, oh, it's all about those fact families and in third grade you guys had to kind of memorize these and if you know your times tables then you know all your fact families because you're just simply reversing the numbers for uh, multiplication to division and taking the answer for multiplication and then using that as the dividend in uh, our division problems so uh, today and tomorrow what we'll be doing is um, working with those compatible numbers and looking for buddies, looking for friendly numbers. So these are the notes that um, we kind of started out with. And so if you didn't get a chance to finish them during class, make sure you pause the video and write them now. And we're going to be going back and forth between unit form and standard form to kind of help you understand. That's about it for that one. To help you understand um, really where to place the decimal. So then we get our book, and I can see it's kind of blurry, so there it is. Okay, all zoomed in. So we're going to complete the sentences with the correct number of units and then complete the equation in standard form over here. So we're looking at how many units we need in this unit form over here. So if I have four groups of how many tenths would make 16 tenths. So call this 16 tenths. And then really what you're kind of thinking of is, well, four groups of something is 16 tenths. And when you see it this way, it's like, okay, well, I know four times four is 16, but I need my answer to end up as tenths. So I want four tenths. So that's how we're kind of doing this. You think about what would that look like in a picture. And it would look like this, four groups of four tenths. So if I had four tenths four times, how many tenths do I have in all? Well, I have 16 tenths. So this here is all that divided into the four groups and then it would make four tenths in each group, okay? So the idea of division is that we're gonna separate a whole into parts, okay? But we're gonna look at it from both, both sides, like getting into it and then coming out of it. So eight groups of how many hundredths is 32? And again, if it's eight groups of something and remember watch for keywords of means multiply is means equals is 32 but 32 what 32 hundredths so 8 times what is 32 and that's when you should be thinking ah oh, these are those compatible numbers I know that 8 times 4 is 32 and so what I need here is 4 hundredths so then looking at the standard form, I would have four hundredths as my final answer. 32 hundredths divided by eight ones is four hundredths. So we're gonna be thinking about what's the place value position where this one ends, what place value position is this one, and we know it's gonna be ones because that's our objective, is just dividing by single digit whole numbers. Single digit whole number, single digit whole number, okay? Seven groups of how many thousandths is 84 thousandths. And you may not know your times tables up to your 12s, but this would be 12 thousandths. And so what does 12 thousandths look like? It looks like this in standard form. And again, get to the thousandths place. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. That's the only way you can say that properly. 12 thousandths, twelve thousandths. Five groups of how many tenths is 
20 tenths or 20 tenths divided by 5 is what? And again, compatible numbers. 5 times 4 is 20. So 4 tenths looks like this. All right, so that's hopefully you're coming along with me. I know this is kind of all new and I will go over it again. Uh, when I'm back, hopefully jury duty won't keep me away for too long. Um, but at the bottom here, we're going to approach it the same way. They have some scaffolding in the beginning and then they kind of slowly take it away. So if I have 42 tenths, this is another one where you have to watch out for the equal signs. This is not the answer here, okay? This is just resetting up the problem. Set up the problem again. There it is again. Then you have an answer. Then you have standard form over here, okay? So how many tenths do I have? I have 42 tenths divided by 7, which would give me 6 tenths as my answer, which would look like that. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to complete the number sentences, and first we're making it uh, in unit form, and then we're making it in standard form. So watch out for all the equal signs and how they kind of narrow it down. So when we have multiple digits, like 2 and 64 hundredths, uh, we're going to start to be able to take it apart and go place by place. So how many ones? Two ones divided by two. Okay. Plus how many hundredths? Now look, they're only giving us an option. They didn't say how many tenths. They're saying how many hundredths. Well, you know, we can take this and we can rename the whole thing to 64 hundredths. So everything that's left after the plus Look at the label. That's all divided by 2. Now let's solve it. 2 ones divided by 2 is 1. And 64 hundredths divided by 2. Well, now that's a little easier because I'm only taking this and dividing it. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. And now I have this part of the number that is the decimal fraction. Now what does that look like in standard form? 1.32. So I feel like when I pull back I go, ta-da! Do you get it? <laughs> Some of you guys are like, no, I don't get it. But anyway, we're going to keep going. So we have 12 ones, okay, because we're taking this apart again, watch out for the equal signs, divided by 2, and then we have 64 hundredths that is the remaining part that we have to consider divided by two. So 12 ones divided by two equals how many ones? Six. 64 hundredths divided by two equals how many? 32. Six ones and 32 hundredths looks like 6.32. And finally, how many tenths do I have together? Watch out. They did not ask us about ones. Watch out, it goes straight to tenths. So rename this. Now why are we regrouping this like that? Why, why would I, why, why? Because 42 is a compatible number when divided by six. Four is not compatible. Four divided by six would not be an easy problem, but 42 divided by six, it should ring bells for you. Okay, if you know your times tables, it will ring bells for you. And then all you have left is that. How many hundredths? Six hundredths. So you're separating the problem into manageable pieces so that there aren't any leftovers. Okay? And then, of course, they take away the scaffolding. So right here, I want to solve this part. 42 tenths divided by 6. That's where you go, I know, I know, it's 7. And it's 7 tenths. But I'm going to add to that, don't forget the plus, 6 hundredths divided by 6, that's 1 hundredth. Okay, now put this together for your final standard form, 7 tenths and 1 hundredth, and that's what you should end up with. Now, on the back, we have zero scaffolding. Don't be afraid, it's okay. 
Oh, and hopefully, you know what? I do, I wonder if you guys can see it. I'm just going to go back up and make sure I show you this. Hopefully, I moved up the book high enough. I don't know. I'm not even looking up. Just trying to get through this stuff so quick. So anyway, uh, four and two hundred thirty-six thousandths divided by six. So now you have to figure out: Can I do this by myself? Can I figure out what the compatible numbers are? And you should be saying. Yes, I can, because I just solved one with 42. And now I can work with 36, because this is also a multiple of 6. So take it apart into these two groups. 42 tenths divided by 6. So set it up with just this part here. And... 36 what? What place value position are we in? 36 thousandths divided by 6. Okay, so this one is the second part, and you've already considered the ones and the tenths place, so that's all done. So that's what's nice about these when taking it apart into compatible numbers. Now, solve. 42 divided by 6 is 7 what? Tenths. Stick with the label. And this just goes straight down. 36 thousandths divided by 6. 36 divided by 6 is 6. And the unit form stays the same. Thousand. Th th oh, what does this look like in standard form? 7 tenths. 6 thousandths. Be careful, be so careful. Tenths, hundredths, nothing. Thousandths, there it is. So your standard form answer, fill in the blanks. Always recognize your place value positions. All right, now for this part, I'm going to put my finished notebook over here and I'm just gonna go through it really quickly while you write it down. You're gonna find the quotients, but use words, numbers, or pictures to describe any relationships you notice between each pair of problems and quotients. First of all, watch out. These are ones, 32 ones divided by eight ones equals four ones. Same problem, except this is now tenths divided by ones. So notice the pattern. When it's tenths divided by ones, my answer is in tenths. What happens here? 81 ones divided by nine ones is nine ones. But 81 thousandths divided by nine ones would give you nine thousandths. So you have to watch out for the unit form and how to place your decimal. Finally, at the bottom, and this is enough of an explanation, is just showing like what's happening with the unit form. Are the quotients below reasonable? Explain your answers. Well, if I have 56 tenths divided by 7, look at it's only 5 divided by 7. I can't get up 7 into 5, not even one whole time. So to say that 8 is the answer, clearly that is too big. That's wrong. So if I have 56 tenths, I would need to have a number in tenths, not ones, as my answer. Moving right along. 56 ones divided by 7 ones should be 8 ones, not 8 tenths. This is now too small. And then this one has hundredths divided by ones, which would be hundredths in the answer. And it is. So yes, this one is accurate. Now, for the word problems. Okay, let's just look at the first one first. Just focus on the first one, not the second one, okay? So 12 and 48 hundredths milliliters of medicine were separated into doses of four milliliters each. Oh, by the way, I noticed some people were only using millimeters, but they're introducing to you here, we haven't really done it in science yet, liters is liquid volume, okay? So L, we're gonna need that if we're measuring medicine especially into droppers. How many doses were made? So you take your 12 and 48 hundredths and divide it by these four milliliters each. So you can do this a couple different ways, so I have a couple samples for you. First of all, you could lump the whole thing into hundredths, which is the place value position where it ends, and divide it by four. 
and get your 312 hundredths. Or you can take your 12.48, divide the 12 ones by 4 ones to get 3 ones, and then divide 48 hundredths by 4 ones to get 12 hundredths. Either way, you end up with the 3.12 or 3 and 12 hundredths milliliters. Oh, sorry, how many doses were made? Uh, 3 and 12 hundredths doses were made exactly. But what does that mean? Well, is 12 hundredths of a dose a full dose? Is 12 hundredths of a dose a full dose? No, it's not. You have three full doses and then you have leftovers. So if you have division where there's no regrouping, you can set it up like this and just hop through and go divide, divide, and get your answer. But sometimes you have to rename or regroup. So let's look at the next one, like what we'll have to do here, okay? Um, or no, we don't have to do it in this lesson, but we'll have to do it soon. Anyway, the price of milk in 2013 was around $3.28 a gallon. Now, this amount was eight times as much as you would have probably paid for a gallon of milk in the 50s. What was the cost for a gallon of milk during the 50s? Okay, <coughs> mystery number. So, something times eight is the new new in 2013 price. Look at where the is is, okay? Is means equals. So whatever the 50s times 8 equals modern. Now, multiplication and division are inverse operations. It's a fancy way of saying opposites. If I want to take what's over here and divide it by this multiple. I just do that. Remember the fact families. Okay, remember the fact families. If I want to know 5 times blank equals 15, I can take the 15 and go 15 divided by 5 equals blank. I can find it by flipping the equation around. So take your $3.28 and divide it by 8. And when you set it up, again, you can call it 328 hundredths divided by 8 equals 32 divided by 8 is 4, 8 divided by 8 is 1, 41 hundredths, labeling it correctly. If you write it in standard form, it's 41 cents, okay, in money form it's going to be a dollar sign, zero dollars, put the zero there, decimal. <clears throat> then this is 41 cents per gallon. This is the dimes, this is the pennies, okay? And then you can also have a tape diagram to help you see what it would look like. That 328 is the total now, but in the 50s, it was whatever it was, mystery number, times eight. And that's how you can get that one. So anyway, that is your problem set, and I hope this is helpful. Uh, we will work on the rest of it uh, soon, and I hope this all made sense for you. Talk to you soon. Bye.